to another episode of Smoke Meat with Jeff. Today is going to be about a little friendly competition with a friend of mine, Chef Paul, is going to be coming over and we are going to have a little cook-off going down. Uh, we're going to have to make a total of two dishes and to, today I'm going to go over these two dishes uh, that I have chosen. Uh, one of them is going to be either beef or pork and Chef Paul has chosen that the secret ingredient that must be used in this recipe is peanut butter. So I am going to be doing a uh, bacon wrapped uh, meatloaf with bacon and peanut butter. And then of course the second uh, item is going to be either chicken or fish and I have chosen for that particular one the secret ingredient that must be used is tequila. So I'm going to be doing some uh, lime and tequila infused uh, chicken lollipops. Damn! Now both of these dishes are experiments for me today, but I'm going to go ahead and chronicle the, uh, the recipes and pass those along to you. So if you wanted to give it a try uh, or modify them on your own, you can. You're going to need some very basic non-food ingredients. For the meatloaf, we are going to need a gallon Ziploc bag, pair of uh, scissors, and of course some wax paper. And for the chicken lollipops, we're going to need little squares of aluminum foil. And we'll get into what all of these will be used for in the future. As far as food ingredients go, for the uh, meatloaf, we're going to need a pound of ground beef, a pound of sliced bacon, and some uh, bacon bits. And of course, we're going to use our secret ingredient, peanut butter. And then I'm going to throw some of my special spices on there as well. Uh, for the chicken lollipops, I went and I just got a whole uh, slew of drumsticks. And we're, of course, going to use uh, some uh, lime juice and tequila. And I am actually brining that chicken. And uh, to learn how to brine, we're going to cover that in a separate episode. Um, and on top of that, we have some special spices that will be put on that as well, as well as I, uh, I will be doing some uh, tequila lime barbecue sauce to glaze these uh, chicken lollipops. So let's get started. While I have the, uh, the chicken brining right now, let's go ahead and get started on the, uh, the meatloaf. And for that, you're, for that you're gonna need your uh, gallon Ziploc bag, your scissors, Forgot to mention you're going to need a rolling pin or a wine bottle or something like that. I uh, got my uh, wax paper and of course I've got my uh, my ground beef, bacon for the bacon weave, uh, special spices, this is my home blend, and the required mystery, mystery ingredient of peanut butter. So to get started on this we are going to take our gallon Ziploc bag and clip off the two little corners like so and if you watched my uh, uh, bacon weave wrap stuffed sausage video this is pretty much the exact same process um, on how we're gonna do this we're just doing it with beef instead of pork so we're gonna cut off the end there squeeze our beef into the Ziploc bag. Seal up the bag. Now we cut the corners off uh, these here so that when we flatten this out the air can escape and we don't end up blowing out the bag. And then you're just going to take your rolling pin and roll this thing out into a uh, basically a square wafer of beef and it's perfectly okay that while you're doing this that you end up with a little bit of the uh, the meat squeezing out the corners where you're letting the air escape it's gonna happen all right just about done and fairly even and consistent and remember, you can flip this thing over and roll on the other side if you need to. This one looks fairly good. All right, next step is going to be uh, 
to stuff this thing with the peanut butter and the bacon bits. So let's go ahead and get our, our uh, wax paper out. As you can see, I got my sheet of wax paper out. And now we're going to open up our uh, uh, beef patty here. So we're going to open that and then just cut down both sides of the Ziploc bag. There's one side. There's the other side. And then we're going to take the Ziploc bag, fold it out of the way. And sometimes I find it easier to actually take the wax paper, lay it down on top, and then flip it over. And then peel back the remainder of the gallon Ziploc bag. And there is your uh, meatloaf ready to be stuffed. Today I'm going to be doing uh, of course the mystery item or the required item of peanut butter and then I'm gonna do bacon I actually uh, cooked the bacon earlier did the bacon bits when you buy this stuff don't don't bother buying the sliced bacon like this package here get the odds and ends uh, package it's quite a bit cheaper and all you're gonna do is cut it up and uh, slice it into bacon bits anyway so why bother paying the extra for uh, for the nice sliced bacon. Okay, I am going to stuff this thing with my special spices here. This is my home blend. Add a little bit of sweetness to this. And just like when we did the um, sausage roll, obviously you can stuff this with just about anything you want. But when you're putting down your ingredients, you want to leave a strip at the, the top end here without anything on it. Because when we roll this thing up, you're going to want this to stick to the outside of the, the roll as you go. And if you put down your, your stuffing ingredients here, that's not going to work. All right, now I'm going to get creative because I'm not sure how well this peanut butter is going to come off the... go on here without it just making a big old mess. But let's give it a shot. I am using chunky peanut butter today. Because what's the point of peanut butter if it's uh, not chunky? Put down a nice little line of peanut butter. If you have never done peanut butter on a hamburger, highly recommended. Nice Kobe beef burger with uh, peanut butter and, uh, and bacon, especially shredded bacon, is just absolutely amazing. So we'll see how this does in the... Uh, in the stuffed meatloaf. And got the peanut butter down. Let's go crazy with the bacon. As far as I'm concerned, can't have too much bacon. Okay, now that I have that all on there, we can start rolling this. And just roll it up nice and tight. And I'm actually going to kind of pinch the ends a little bit to try and keep all the ingredients in there. And there we go. Our meatloaf is stuffed with peanut butter and bacon ready to go. Now I just need to put out the bacon weave uh, and get this thing rolled up. Okay, here you can see that I have the bacon weave ready to go for uh, rolling up the meatloaf. If you want to learn how to make the, uh, the bacon weave, check it down below in the links to uh, the basics of how to make a bacon weave video that I have posted for you. Because you will find this used a lot in my recipes uh, for things going on the smoker. I like to, uh, I love bacon and I love to wrap things in bacon. Um, but today we are going to wrap our meatloaf. So here's the bacon weave. We got our, uh, our meatloaf ready to go, stuffed with the, um, the bacon bits, as well as uh, the secret ingredient chosen by Chef Paul, peanut butter. Uh, to do this, you're basically going to put it down towards the end, roll the meatloaf on, and then we're going to take this whole thing with the wax paper, and we are going to roll this thing up. 
And because the, the meatloaf is a little bit thinner than the sausage roll I've done earlier, we're actually going to get about a double layer for most of this on the, uh, the bacon. So we're going to roll this thing up. And actually pinch the ends a little bit. And then I am going to actually keep this thing in the wax paper in the refrigerator until it's time to put this thing on the smoker. Uh, makes it easier to handle. You can move it around, carry it, take it straight to the smoker or to the barbecue and put, put it directly on there, of course, removing the wax paper when you do so. Um, so let's come back a little bit later when it's time to get this thing cooking. In the meantime, uh, I'm going to get started on doing some prep work with the chicken lollipops. While we're waiting for the chicken to brine and uh, I've got some time, I'm just going to show you how I make my uh, my tequila lime barbecue sauce. I mean, this is really, really difficult, let me tell you. So I've got my, uh, my tequila, the secret ingredient for the uh, chicken or fish dish for today. I got my lime juice and I've got some barbecue sauce. So let's get to the really complicated part. Throw a little bit of lime in there, a few squirts of that. Dump a little tequila in the bottle. Put the cap on. And mix. And that is it. This is going to be fairly thin, which is good because it will uh, uh, go on evenly when I'm uh, basting the chicken lollipops later on today. Uh, you don't have to worry about the alcohol content, so family's safe because once it's on the barbecue, the alcohol will just uh, evaporate off, but leaving the flavor of the lime and tequila. Well, it's time to put our uh, um, bacon-wrapped uh, meatloaf onto the smoker. So I pulled this out of the refrigerator. I got my Bradley rack ready to go. And as you can see in the background, I've got my smoker set up and up to temperature. Um, so pretty much all we're going to do is we're going to find the end of our wrapper and unwrap this directly onto the Bradley rack, making sure that the bacon seam is facing down is actually on this side and that is ready for the smoker today I am going to be smoking with some uh, almond and mesquite and this is going to be on the smoker for about three hours or so so let's get this going and then we'll uh, while we're working on while this is on the smoker we will work on the chicken lollipops since those only go on for the smoker for about two hours Now that we have our bacon wrapped meatloaf in the smoker, we have we can turn our attention to the chicken poly, uh, lollipops. And what this what this makes this a lollipop is we're going to take the chicken leg, and from about here on down, we're going to remove all of the skin uh, and te muscle and tendons to expose the chicken leg like so, um, and then um, work it into a little lollipop. Uh, so you can hold it while eating it. Works out really well. To do this you're going to need a very sharp knife and grab your pair of scissors because you're going to find there's uh, tendons in here that uh, are kind of a pain in the, the rear to, uh, to separate. And it takes a few chicken legs to, uh, to figure out your flow as to uh, what's the best way to do this. Um, it takes a little bit of getting used to and finesse to make it happen but eventually uh, you'll get through these things fairly quickly and you'll end up with a bunch of these and then we'll move on to the next step Okay, as you can see I got all these uh, chicken legs primed got the uh, the ends cut off exposing the legs and Now we want to take these legs and actually wrap them in a uh, wrap the chicken leg part the bone itself in a little little pocket of foil and you're doing this because when this thing gets onto the barbecue or grill, you don't want that bone um, becoming black and, uh, and really you know, cooking and charring. And this will help protect it. So we're going to do this for each one of these, um, these chicken legs to protect the bone from the extreme heat or the, uh, the heat that's coming off of the smoker or barbecue, depending on how you want to do this. So we're going to finish up that and then we'll be back for the seasoning. 
All right, all of my chicken leg or chicken lollipops, the uh, the bone ends are now wrapped in foil to protect it. And now it's just a matter of uh, applying some seasoning. And you're gonna to wanna to do this on both sides. And then these things are gonna go onto the smoker. So nice, nice layer here. Flip them over and then we'll do the other side. And these will go onto the smoker for about two hours or until the internal temperature hits 165 degrees. Uh, of course, before it is done, we will start slathering it with my uh, tequila lime barbecue sauce to uh, really glaze this over. You can put these directly on the rack or on the, the grill um, or use a Bradley rack, which is what I will be doing, which makes it easier for transport, making sure to leave enough space between each, um, each uh, leg so that you can get adequate smoke around it and have room for putting the barbecue sauce on there. So let's get this thing onto the grill. All right, it's about an hour into the cook time and I've got, uh, got the chicken ready to go onto the smoker. And I don't know if you can hear it, but we got a little summer rain going on right now. Nice little break, but uh, let's get this onto the smoker and check on the meatloaf. So that's just gonna go right directly on the grate for about two hours and we'll come back in about an hour and a half or so uh, and start slathering on the uh, barbecue sauce. And then over here we got the, um, uh, the meatloaf crisping up nicely. So we'll come back and check in in a little bit. All right, we're about half away from uh, our dinner being ready between the uh, chicken lollipops and the um, bacon wrapped uh, meatloaf. So let's take a look. Here you can see we got the, uh, the chicken popsicles. And man, that, that bacon's looking awesome. We got, we got some little peanut butter coming out the end. So now that we're getting pretty close, I've got my barbecue sauce here. <clears throat> we can start coating the uh, lollipops in the barbecue sauce to give them kind of a little candy coating. And remember, this is the barbecue sauce with the lime and tequila in it. So we will just give these a, a good coat, probably come back in about 10 minutes or so, do another coat, and just keep going about every 10 minutes or so until these are ready to come off the smoker. So that's where we stand. Can't wait to see what uh, Chef Paul is, is coming to uh, go up against my little smoked meat concoctions here. So we'll come back in a little bit. All right, we got everything pulled off the smoker and uh, take a look at what we got here. We've got the um, uh, tequila lime chicken lollipops glazed in the, uh, the tequila lime um, barbecue sauce that we made earlier. And then we've got our bacon wrapped um, meatloaf with the peanut butter inside and uh, bacon bits. So let's take a look at this. I have to clean my cutting board. It's just juicing all over the place. Look at that. So we will find out a little bit later when the official judges uh, dig into um, our creations and I will also get to see what Chef Paul is bringing to the table. So uh, let's eat. Okay, I'm here with Chef Paul who has brought his competing dishes to uh, to this night's family barbecue night. So Paul, uh, what do you have for us tonight? Uh, tonight we have a uh, pork chop stuffed with apples and peanut butter topped with a nice balsamic glaze. Get nice and, uh, it's uh, seared and then baked in the oven and I seared it again. Then we have um, some tequila marinated shrimp um, with some garlic and some wine um, grilled and it's sitting atop a um, marinated, actually soaked in tequila watermelon. So, Man, that looks good. So uh, we're going to have to leave it up to our judges to, uh, to dig in and figure out which one they like the best. The one with the line. All right, so we got the judges lining up. Yes. Best thing is for this? Yeah, but... All right, so we got food served and the judges are on. 
we got a little bit of silence going because everybody's eating, of course. But I think the real winners here is uh, everybody at the dinner table. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to say thank you to Paul. Hey, Paul. Thanks for, uh, for doing this with me. This is Jeff with uh, Smoked Meat with Jeff. Until next time. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> Well, I wanted to follow up after looking at the, uh, the footage for this particular episode and realizing that uh, Chef Paul really didn't get enough screen time, and I wanted to give him a, a, a particular thank you for doing this competition with me. Uh, between our dishes, as I said earlier, it's pretty much uh, guaranteed that the, uh, the judges, or everybody who was at the dinner table, were the real winners of this competition. So I want to say thank you, Chef. Uh, I hope to, that we can do this again in the future. and. Uh, let, let's see what type of concoctions we can come up and, with and challenge each other for the next round.